Now in this video, I'll answer all the questions that you ask me in my first impressions video and I'll share with you guys everything that you guys need to know about the Xiaomi Mi A3, so keep watching. Hey what's up guys, Adam Lobo here and you're watching Adam Lobo TV. If you guys are new, Hello and welcome. Do consider subscribing to this channel as I release videos at least twice a week. And if you're returning as a subscriber, welcome back my friends. Now let's first unbox the phone. Now the Xiaomi Mi A3 comes in a white box with the visuals of the phone on the outside with the Mi logo on the top right. Then at the back, you'll find some of the specs over there with Android 1 down below. Then at the sides, you'll find another Mi A3 text with Android 1 as well. Now opening the box, you'll find a small white box which has the SIM ejector pin on the outside. Then you'll find a user guide inside with a clear phone case. And of course, you'll find the phone itself. Underneath that, you'll find a USB A to USB C cable and a 10 watt charging brick. Now, just before going into the phone specs, I would like to thank this video sponsor, PDF Element. Now, if you are a student or like me who deals with a lot of PDF documents, PDF Element is an amazing software which lets you convert PDF documents to Word and then back to PDF again. What is also super cool is that PDF Element is absolutely for free for Android and iOS devices and there's also a paid desktop version for Mac and Windows as well. So yes, you can use your laptop or your tablet to take notes and manage it even if you did not create the PDF documents yourself and it comes in really handy as you can remove or add information and rearrange the page accordingly. So guys, do check out PDF Element right now and click the link down below to enjoy 50% discount on the desktop version right now. Now going over to the phone specs, the Xiaomi Mi A3 comes with the Snapdragon 665 chipset with the Adreno 610 GPU. In Malaysia, it comes in two variants which is a 4GB of RAM with 64GB of storage and 4GB of RAM with 128GB of storage. It comes shipped with Android 9 Pie with the stock Android 1 which is really refreshing. Now going into the color finishes, it comes in three colors for you guys to choose from. The one which I have is called More Than Words. More than white. More than words. Again, I made the mistake. Then there's not just blue and kind of grey, which again is the similar naming style that you get with Pixel devices. Now looking at the phone's design and build, using the phone as a daily driver felt great as I didn't feel like I was holding a cheap piece of device. Now the overall finish was nice and classy as you guys can see with the aluminium materials at the sides. Now like most mid-range phones, the screen is flat on top and at the back is slightly curved where it is made of Corning Gorilla Glass 5 for protection. Now the camera bump is not as prominent as the Xiaomi Mi 9 for all the lenses but it is still shaky if you type the phone down on the surface like this. Now the three lenses are arranged in a vertical position towards the left side of the phone and like the other newly released Xiaomi phones, the Mi A3 also comes with the in-display fingerprint sensor which is an optical in-display fingerprint sensor so yes, overall, I was quite happy with the build quality. And no Lokman Hakim, the phone does not come with an IP rating. Now as for the phone's spots and buttons, looking down below there is the USB-C port with a single mono firing speaker although there's two speaker cutouts and then there's a SIM card and the micro SD card slot on the left which supports up to 256 gigs of storage. Thank God they kept that. And then you'll also find the power button and the volume rocker on the right. And on top there's the headphones jack, another great move from Xiaomi. So, And you'll find the IR blaster over there. Now speaking of IR blasters, that seems to be the question for most people when they ask at the comment section below. So guys, let me know why is it important and how do you guys use IR blasters daily down at the comment section below. I would love to hear how you guys use it. 
Now as for the phone screen, it has a 6.088 inch Super AMOLED display where to be completely honest, it does look really nice. And there's the dew drop notch which you guys know my views on phones with notches. And then the phone comes with a screen resolution of 720 by 1560 pixels. Yes, it is a 720p screen and I did a side to side comparison of the Xiaomi Mi 9 and also the Mi A3. Yes, there is a difference if you put it side by side but as a person like me who shoots true 4K DCI output, I did not see a big issue of the 720p screen, especially when I use the phone as my daily driver two weeks in. So having a 720p screen means that you are kept at the maximum resolution of 720p, where again, it was perfectly fine because if you really think about it, data plans nowadays can be quite slow. Sometimes you are not even realizing that you are watching YouTube videos at 480p or even 360p. So if you really think about that, even the iPhone XR's display is at 720p. So keep that in mind. So there's your answer, John Philip L. Ortega, Amirul Fikri, Black Tooth Green, Roman Collar on the display and Shiva Teja Devasani on the comparison with another Super AMOLED display phone. Now as for the phone's camera specs, there are three cameras. One is a huge 48 megapixel wide f1.8 aperture lens, an 8 megapixel ultra wide f2.2 aperture lens and a 2 megapixel f2.4 depth sensor. Now testing the 48 megapixel mode was great but then again, I would use this mode only if you guys are taking a photo to be printed out on a billboard. Yes, you can if you want to. So I would stick with the regular camera shots where to me I was flawed by the great image produced by this phone and the pictures look great with excellent dynamic range and since this is a Xiaomi phone I did get the Gcam app for this as well and the rear camera results was pretty similar but all in all it was great even under heavy backlight situations and the portrait mode for the phone was also amazing as the shadow depth of field was great with nice detail on the background blur where you could not tell that the images were produced in a non-flagship phone. Now like other Xiaomi phones, the wide angle lens was also great to capture architecture or even landscapes with minimal distortion at the sides. Now I'm not sure what Blackmagic Xiaomi has been doing because the night shots look stunning where again I was blown away by the photos produced during at night with proper details on the shadows and highlights with awesome noise reduction. And in the night mode, you can optically zoom up to two times with no loss of detail. So there's your camera samples as hard local. Now as for the front camera, it comes with a huge 32 megapixel f2.0 aperture where there was a bigger difference in image quality using the Gcam app and the stock camera app as I felt that the Gcam app had a better background separation for the portrait mode where the stock camera app's portrait mode can sometimes be overexposed. But the regular selfies was great on both apps. But if you guys are using the Gcam app, do not forget to turn off the HDR for the front camera as the pictures came out with a little green tinge. And also don't forget to turn off the face retouching as you will get a softer images. And yes, I will link the Gcam app down below for you guys to download it in your phone. So there's more camera samples, Blonde Deep V2. Now as for video, the rear camera records up to UHD 4K 2160 up to 30 frames per second where the videos look nice but the image stabilization was not at its best using the main camera lens but the image stabilization shines is through the wide angle lens where the videos was really steady and captured amazing dynamic range so I would use the rear camera to turn the phone around like this if you guys want to take a high quality vlogs as it will capture you in the frame since it uses an ultra wide angle lens. Then as for the front, it records up to 1080p up to 30 frames per second where the image stabilization was decent. So there's your answer, Mohamed Fitri and Shakir Zafran. Now as for the phone sound quality, the speaker did sound great although it has just a mono firing speaker. Now the overall clarity came mainly from the midst of the songs listened on the speaker and here's a quick sound test. Now there were other reviewers mentioning about how listening on the headphones was not great but to me it did sound great both listening on the headphones jack and also through Bluetooth since the phone comes with APTX HD. 
And that's your answer, square balls. Okay. Now as for the phone software, it is shipped with Android 9 Pie with Android 1. Hmm. Let's talk Android for the win. But I gotta say that having tested the MIUI recently, it is starting to grow in me, especially with swiping at the middle of the screen to go to your notifications menu. And I think it is about time that Android One start embracing more gesture controls into their UI. But of course, there's nothing close to the settings and the menu navigation on stock Android devices. Now on to the phone's battery life. The phone comes with 4,030 milliamps of battery and based on my test, using the phone as my daily driver with automatic brightness turned on, I got a total of 6 hours and 55 minutes of screen on time at 10% battery and that my friend is pretty amazing. And the phone supports fast charging at 18 watts with Quick Charge 3 technology but as mentioned in my unboxing, the phone comes with a 10 watt charger instead. Now as for gaming, playing games at Asphalt 9 was good and pretty smooth however you will need to compromise on the quality to go to low settings when playing games like PUBG Mobile but again that was not a big deal and the good news is there is no heating issues due to its lower screen resolution so that's a bonus. So that's your gaming test Alistair Young. And that's also your answer Selin Misha. Now in conclusion, the Xiaomi Mi A3 ticks almost all the boxes for being a great mid-range phone as the only box not tick is of course the display which is again totally up to you whether or not you can live with a slightly lower screen resolution in exchange for a better CPU and battery performance and of course a really affordable price. As for the phone's price here in Malaysia, the Xiaomi Mi A3 is going for only 899 ringgit for 4 gigs of RAM with 64 gigs of storage and 999 ringgit for the 128 gig storage variant. And of course, I would like to thank this video sponsor, PDF Element. PDF Element is an amazing software which lets you convert PDF documents to Word and then back to PDF again. What is also super cool is that PDF Element is absolutely for free for Android and iOS devices and there's also a paid desktop version for Mac and Windows as well. So guys, do check out PDF Element right now and click the link down below to enjoy 50% discount on the desktop version right now. Alright guys, with this do let me know what you guys think of the Xiaomi Mi A3 down in the comment section below. Would you guys get it? And do let me know if you guys have any other questions to ask me about the Xiaomi Mi A3 as I'll be holding on the phone a bit longer. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash the like button, like, share and subscribe to Adam Lobo TV. If you haven't done so, don't forget to hit the bell icon just next to it to get notified for my future videos. Thank you so much for watching. This is Adam Lobo and I'll catch you guys in my next video.